Hello and welcome into my attic. So once a month our thrift market comes to town. It's on a Sunday and we love to go. So I thought I'd give you a very quick glimpse of our Italian thrift market and show you just a couple of little things that I picked up. Okay, so this is one of the things I thrifted, a stainless steel tray. I like the shape of it, that's why I got it. And I paid one euro for this. Here's a cheese grater that I paid one euro for, which has got a really great patina on it. Here's the rest of the stuff I got that day. This is a really cute um, little pot with a lid, uh, china, and it's really adept for now, for like the autumn, with all these little animals on it. Um, and that was three euros, which my partner bought that actually. So here's a nice little ceramic pot which I thought was quite nice for a plant and it has a little chip on it but I don't care about that, it doesn't bother me and I paid one euro for this. This here I guess is a, an ashtray made of brass. Um, I'm, I could really clean it up a lot with uh, toothpaste is a good thing to use or just um, vinegar and water but I'm not going to do any of that I'm going to keep the patina on it um, and I'm just going to put my keys in it give it a good wash and just leave my keys uh, in the entrance way and for that I paid two euros so here we have a candle holder brass I paid two euros for this uh, it's just dirty I'm not going to take off the patina I'm just going to wash it take out the candle and it can be completely dismantled and I think I'll take off the handle actually. I love the detail on it and I paid two euros for this. So this was the prize catch of the day, it's very heavy, uh, it has a little chip on it but as I said before it doesn't bother me. Um, I'm, I am going to paint it, I wasn't going to but I've decided that I will now. Um, yeah it's a, a good catch for five euros. So now I'm going to go and give everything a wash and let's see what I do with all this. So as I said before, this is just for my keys. 
this for the moment is just going to be an ornament as is but I might maybe in the future I might put a little tree in it and take the lid off and here's the candle holder and I've taken off the handle as far as this jar is concerned I'm going to leave it as it is um, I'm not going to paint it I'm just going to put on a matte medium a chalky matte medium which I'm going to make myself and which will give it a very silky smooth finish and will give it a kind of a chalky look so it's not so shiny so to make this matte medium all you need is white glue um, cornstarch and a little water and you just mix them together and I think you know there's no special doses or anything just mix them together and then I'm just going to sponge it over and when it dries I'll dry it with the hairdryer actually and that will give it much more resistance and make it stick really really well to the ceramic and that's it I'll do a second coat, it just takes a few seconds to dry with the hairdryer. And here's my chalky looking pot. Which do you prefer, the shiny or the chalky? So for the next makeover, I'll be doing this big white hefty jug here. And as I said before, it does have a couple of chips in the top, but it doesn't worry me. Once it's painted, it won't hardly notice at all. Um, you know, I'm just going to be using it for floral decoration. So I bought these stickers here and I'm going to stick them on every other panel because I don't want too much decoration. I don't want it to be exaggerated. So yeah, on every other panel and that's it. So of course the jug has been thoroughly washed and degreased so that the paint will stick on better. There's no primer. I've just put two teaspoons of cornstarch in my paint and two teaspoons of wood glue and a little squirt of water to mix it and make it creamy. Then I'm going to dry off everything with the hairdryer and that all that together is the perfect ingredient to make the paint stick really really well to the ceramic I'm going to brush it on and then I'm going to dab it to take away the brush marks to make it nice and silky smooth and I'm going to do a couple of coats of that um, and you know keep drying in between with the hair dryer don't worry about the paint sticking on the gems because it absolutely will uh, you know once you put the cornstarch and the glue into the paint then and you use the hair dryer as well that is what makes it stick uh, really steadfastly the paint I'm using is just a cheap acrylic um, if I didn't use the cornstarch and the glue and the hair dryer this paint would not stick to this ceramic at all um, it's just a cheap one euro tube of paint but um, putting the cornstarch and glue makes it really stick well um, especially when you use the hairdryer that just bakes it on cooks it on and it just gives the paint such a better quality so if you just have cheap acrylic paints then I would advise you to use those ingredients as well because you know they don't cost a lot to buy it at all and it really does upgrade your paint Okay, so now I've dried off my two coats of lime with the hairdryer. Um, I'm going to proceed with the next colour. But first, before I do that, I want to rub a piece of candle all over the jug so that when I sandpaper off the top colour, uh, it will come off more easily. And obviously, I'm going to use a white candle or a transparent candle. I don't want to be using like a red candle, of course, because it will just all show through and look horrible. So... Yeah, that is what I'm going to do now. So here I'm adding the next colour, which is like a sage green. And I've made it in the same way as I made the other paint. And I'm just going to do one coat of that. I'm going to leave everything to completely dry until tomorrow 
and then I can carry on with the sanding. Okay, it's the next day, everything's bone dry. I can just take my 220 grit sandpaper and sand all over the jug, just very lightly, just to show through the lime color underneath. So once this is finished, I can seal it if I want to with wax or a sealer, uh, but I don't want to. I like the look of it like this. Uh, it looks very rustic. And, you know, if one day I want to paint it again, I haven't got to deal with all the wax underneath the paint. Now it's time for the stainless steel tray. It has a lovely shape and I want it to look like an old kitchen plate. So what I'm going to do first of all is give it two coats of my brown paint. Uh, if you want that recipe, it's in the description. And um, it's a very gritty paint. And what I like about it is that when I add my white paint on top um, and then I sandpaper it down, the little brown gritty pieces are going to pop through and give it a nice speckled antique look. I'll be drying off with the hairdryer between coats. Okay, so I took a couple of photos uh, to show you the grittiness of it up close. Sorry about the bright light on this. It's kind of looks like it's changed the color completely, but it hasn't. It's just there's such a bright light in here today with the sun. So um, yeah, as you can see, there's uh, it's very gritty. Now it's completely dry, I can rub my candle wax over the top because I'm going to give it a white coat of paint and then I'm going to sand that as well when it's dry of course and then you know I have all my little dark brown lumps showing through. Okay so I did a couple of coats of the white and I let it dry completely until the next day and then I took my uh, 220 grit sandpaper and gently rubbed off the uh, white paint to let show through the brown underneath. Now it looks really nice like this, but uh, I'm gonna carry on. Uh, I want it to look like an old plate, like an antique plate. So I'm gonna uh, carry on with the next step now. Oh yes, and by the way, I did do the back rim as well because it may notice when it's hung up. So my next step was to find um, a label to transfer onto the plate. And this one here was from the Graphics Fairy and it was the, the completely correct size, which was very lucky. So I um, made it into black and white and I printed it from my inkjet printer um, with reverse text. Here's how it turned out. Now because I just want a faint print of this because I want it to look like old and worn, I'm just going to use my matte medium, uh, wet the plate with my matte medium with a brush, put it face down, that's why the text is reversed, and then wait a few minutes, um, not too long because I don't want the print to be very strong, and then I'll just pull it up. Well, it would be nice if it all came off in one go, but sometimes it does. But this time it didn't, so I've got to pull up little bits at a time, but, you know... It will come off in the end. <laughs>
DIYers are very patient people. Now I'm just going to bake it on with the hairdryer. Now I'm going to add some clear wax to seal it and then some antiquing wax to darken it up and make it look even more antique. Because it's for my own personal use and I don't want to drill holes in it, I'm just going to add this really strong um, double-sided stick tape to stick it on the wall. I'm really pleased how this came out considering it was an old scuffed up stainless steel tray before. Um, yeah, it look, to me it looks like um, an original vintage plate. For the cheese grater, basically I used it as a picture frame. Very vintage of course. I took a photocopy of this beautiful old photo of my grandmother. I think it's really gorgeous. I wanted to slide it into the grooves of the grater. So to make that happen, I glued it onto a piece of MDF. Then I glued a Twinings tea bag, a used one of course, on the top to give it an old tarnished look. If you haven't got a tea bag you could use just wax or coffee stain it as an alternative. The image will become clearer as it dries. I gave it a quick blast with the hairdryer to help it along to dry. Then I sealed it with clear wax. I cut and waxed some simple popsicle sticks to make a basic frame for my photo that was thin enough to fit into the cheese grater slots. And then I just glued them on around the photo using wood glue. So I chose various decorations. Then I painted them with a rust effect and the recipe is in the description. So I took a couple more popsicle sticks, very small ones, and I want to use them as plaques. Then I glued my rusty embellishments onto the frame and onto the plaques and then I glued everything onto the cheese grater. So to stick the picture frame to the cheese grater, I just turned over the cheese grater, uh, stuck some hot glue, a couple of blobs, into a couple of the holes of the cheese grater. And so uh, it steadfastly uh, stuck to the MDF on the other side 
and it wasn't moving anywhere after that. I then hot glued on a strip of old rag and a strip of jute ribbon on top of that with a rusty key held on by a safety pin. Then I glued on a couple of buttons. Then on the back, I hot glued on a mixture of dried flowers and faux green leaves. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I've always wanted to decorate a cheese grater and this is the first time I've ever done it and I don't think it will be the last. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye!